you are in a battle, you're in a war, it's going on around you. Uh, sometimes you think there's a time of peace in the middle of it. There is no peace in that. That's why Jesus said, John chapter 14, in verse 27, he said, peace, I leave with you. So he was, peace is something he can leave with you. It's a force. He said, if you go into a city, look for a person of peace. And he said, go to the house. And if, you, if you're there, you say, peace be in this house. And if there's a son of peace is there, then your peace will remain. If not, it'll come back to you. That's a whole lot more than just having a peaceful feeling. Right? There's a force behind peace. And honestly, I know very few Christians who live in peace. Very few. Uh, now, you say, well, wait, you just said we're at war. You can be at war and have peace in the very middle of the war. I mean, right in the middle of it, right? The uh, best example I have uh, is, of course, Jesus going across the, the Sea of Galilee, and in the middle, a storm rears up, and he's sleeping peacefully in the back of the boat. And all his disciples are up the front just freaking out, right? And, I mean, they're screaming and yelling and bailing water. And then finally, one of them runs back there. Peter, of course, runs back there and says, Master, don't you care? We're perishing. We're going to die here. And you're asleep. Boy, how many times have Christians treated God like that? They think that the storm on their behalf creates an emergency in heaven. It doesn't. God knew about it. He's already prepared. He's already made the, the way of escape. But the reason most Christians, like these disciples, began to panic is because they did not prepare before the storm. So if you think you're at peace, now's the time to prepare for war. Why? Why you have the time. The hardest, to, the hardest time to get ready is in the middle of a fight. That's the hardest time. That's why we always say the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today, right? So you get started. So wherever you're at, get started. Now, it, with us, well, we know that sickness and disease is, is a, a warfare against us, and we can prove that, and we can show you from Scripture. And if you're well, healthy, rejoice, thank God, prepare for war. Prepare while you're healthy. Don't wait until you get the diagnosis. And then you're scrambling, and your emotions are all over the place. And I can tell you now, you will always be one of two types of people. You'll be the person praying for others or the person getting prayed for. That's the way it works. So today I want to emphasize the warfare that goes on, and I want to show you the peace through it because that's the essence of it. A lot of people know about warfare. They don't know about peace. and They don't know how to have peace in the middle of the storm. Peace in the middle of the storm means that a person is going literally through hell and you would never know it. The person looking at, the people looking at that person would never know what they're going through. Why? Because they have peace that passes understanding. That's the peace that Jesus wants us to have in the middle of a fight. Now, I will tell you this. Peace is a force. <clears throat> But, and, and really, peace, I even have it written down somewhere. Yep, peace comes two ways. Number one, knowing that you are prepared for any contingency, and we could even say the second one, and knowing that the one that has the ability to help you will be there when you need him. That's how peace comes. <clears throat> now, that's, that's a two-part peace. Let me tell you, if you don't prepare before the battle, you won't have peace in the battle because you won't know that the one that can help you will help you and will be there for you. Why? Because that's the preparation. The preparation for the good fight of faith is faith in God, that he is there for you and will see you through and take you through and that you will come out the other side victorious, not just crawling out, beat up, and all that kind of stuff. You come out victorious. Why? Because you must be an overcomer not just a, an endurer, but an overcomer. Amen? <clears throat> now, he said, peace, in John 14, 27. <clears throat> he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Well, again, what kind of peace did he have? He had a peace that let him sleep in the middle of the storm. That's one of the funniest things that I notice around people. 
you watch people, people of faith or people of peace. If you have faith, you have peace. If you don't have peace, you don't have faith. It's pretty simple. Now, I'm not saying that your emotions don't rise up. I'm not saying that you, you know, the enemy doesn't attack in that area and that kind of stuff. I'm just saying that even in the middle of it, there will be a peace, even if you might get a little shaken sometimes. I mean, come on, if you're in a boat and it's, you know, being tossed around, you might be shaken a little bit, but you still know how it's going to end. Remember with the Apostle Paul, big storm comes up, and they said, start throwing things over. And he said, no, don't worry about this. He said, God stood by me tonight, and he told me that he's going to protect me and everybody on this ship. I think, what, 276 men, something like that. And so, and, and now listen, they had to actually believe this guy. He's a prisoner in chains, down, as they would say, in the hold. And he said, no, don't do that. Don't, don't waste anything. Don't throw anything over. Just, you know, hang on, hang on. It's going to be okay. And his captors had to believe him. Now think about that. And he was down there and all this stuff's going on. He didn't look like he was in control, but he was. He was in control of himself. He didn't get all worried and panicked and all that kind of stuff. And that's where a lot of this comes out. Now, he says here, not as the world gives. Now, as I said, the, the, okay, Jesus said, peace I give you, my peace. Not just any peace. The world has peace when there's no conflict. The peace that Jesus has is peace in the middle of conflict, knowing that the one that you trust will see you through. Right? Now, so the peace that Jesus has, that's what he said. He said, my peace I give unto you, my peace. Now, what kind of peace did he have? Well, we've already talked about it. He had peace that let him sleep in the middle of a storm. You get that? What does that mean? And if you can, if you can sleep, now a lot of people can lay down in the middle of a storm, but they ain't at peace. And they'll lay there and their mind will race. And the thing will be going on all around them and they'll think, well, we can do this, well, we can do that. Well, we might be able to, do I don't know. I don't know if that'll work. But that's not peace. See, peace is able, in the middle of a storm, when it's time to go to bed, you go, you lay down, you go to sleep, you get up. That's the way that peace works. This is the kind of peace Jesus said you should have. You get that? He didn't say no storms. Matter of fact, he promised there will be storms. And a matter of fact, he didn't even say that you won't have the storms that other people have. He said, people hear the word of God. Some of them do it, some of them don't. Same storm hits both. But the house that stands is the ones that do his word. Amen? 